The Rafflesia flower goes by many names, and almost all of those names sound like goth bands. Corpse flower, devil's beetle box, stinking corpse lily, sun toadstool. All right, that last one sounds more like a hippie band, but still, you get the idea. The association with death that this flower has has to do with its reputation for smelling like and looking like rotting meat. The Rafflesia is a parasitic blossom that has no leaves and no stem. In order for it to grow, it does something that's very unique. Blue flies that are lured by the smell of rotting meat will land inside of it, pick up pollen, and then carry it to a completely unrelated plant, the tetrastigma vine. When it lands, it will start to form a very small, indistinguishable bud, which then grows bigger and bigger until it gets to like the size of like a large cabbage. And after six years, each petal will slowly and dramatically fall. And after it blooms, it lasts for six days before it dies. So think about it, six years of growing and then this big reveal and then pfft, death. The flower is well known in Malaysia and is the center of a large tourist industry in East Malaysia. There's even an image of the flower on the 10 ringgit note. What a lot of people don't know, however, is that the Rafflesia flower also grows in West Malaysia, just a stone's throw from the nation's capital, Kuala Lumpur. Out in this area, the Cameron Highlands, so the temperature is much cooler, and there's a whole bunch of different fruits and vegetables that grow there. So there's a lot of agro-tourism. People go there to go and go berry picking and stuff like that. And in the Cameron Highlands, it's actually a lot easier to come across this flower than in Borneo or in Indonesia, because in those areas, it's seasonal. Only one part of the year you can see the flower. In the Cameron Highlands, it blooms all year round. However, because it takes so long for it to grow and then only lasts for a few days, in order to see it, you have to be very proactive about it. You can't just like walk into a tourist office and expect to go. If you want to go there, you need to call tourist agencies that do treks and see if there's one blooming. If there is, then you got six days to get there and see it before it wilts and dies. I think the one that I saw in this video is on like the fourth or fifth day and you can kind of tell that it's wilting around the corners. So if you were to get it on like day one, it's going to be vibrant and not wilty at all. But if you get there on day six, you're looking at mush. When I originally went to go see this flower, I read online somewhere that it produces a fruit. I asked my guide if there was a fruit, if I could see it, kind of like maybe I'd be able to eat it if I asked nicely, took like a little nibble of it. Well, the guy flat out just said no to me, like there is no fruit. He did say, however, that it has historically been used in medicine. The Orangazali, I'm probably saying that wrong, the tribe in that area, they will take the premature buds of this flower and they'll like prepare it in different types of medicine. Now, as you can imagine, this is not a good thing to do because this is an extremely vulnerable plant. So the government has taken efforts to restrict this from happening. Uh, and one of the things that my guide said that they do is they will actually pay off uh, some of the tribes not to do it. I'm guessing it's probably illegal as well, and this is an area where caning is a thing. So I think you probably wouldn't want to mess with these flowers anyway. Now, if you've heard of this flower, you've probably heard of its reputation for smelling like rotting meat. I hate to burst everybody's bubble, but I smelled this. I put my face right into it. I breathed in as deeply as I could, and I smelled nothing. So I think it does emit a rotting meat smell, but it's something that is mostly detectable if you are a fly. Uh, me not being a fly, I didn't smell it. My guide did tell me that there are several different species of Rafflesia, and uh, it's likely that other ones have a stronger smell than the one that I smelled, but it does kind of put the myth to rest that not all corpse flowers smell like a corpse. This was honestly a little bit of a letdown for me, but I can't deny that this was incredible to see. 
you know, even though I went on this trek such a long time ago, I still remember how excited I was just like traversing through the jungle. And we walked for a while, probably like a couple of hours or something. And then just seeing this like gigantic red sore like on the earth when everything else is just brown and green everywhere. It was just such a tremendous like shocking sight for this thing to just like pop up. If you end up finding yourself in Malaysia or in Indonesia where it also grows, um, do some calls, you know, make some calls and see if you can find a uh, Rafflesia flower that is growing in the area you're in because this is something that really should not be missed. If you are interested in plants or not, it is still an incredible thing to see. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, you may want to check out the video that is below me right now. That should be good, too. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, it is a huge help to my channel, so please do consider subscribing or clicking that bell. That does something, too. Not sure what it is. Also, check out the description below. There's all sorts of other things I have going on. I don't even know anymore. But, guys, I will see you next time. Take care.